I want to talk to you for a little bit about what makes Betaflight V2 different from Betaflight V1. And in order to do that, I'm going to talk about filters uh, for a little bit. Filtering is necessary uh, on a copter or, or really on any kind of, of gyro sensor. Um, and the reason for that is that usually with a gyro sensor, you are trying to measure a relatively low frequency phenomena like the, the copter's um, motions, you know, when you're flying it, the actual motions of the copter are, are typically uh, on the range of around 20 hertz or lower, maybe 50 hertz or lower. By comparison, the noise from the motors, the vibration from the motors, is typically in the range of 350 to 400 hertz, on, on certain, depending on the size of your props and the speed of your motors, of course. So what we want to do is we, we need to be able to get rid of that noise from the motors so that the copter is not trying to compensate for it. It's, it's random noise. It, it doesn't need to be compensated for. Whereas if, if the wind blows and the copter tips to the left, the PID algorithm needs to compensate for that. So, so a low-pass filter is used, and, and this is such a common thing that the, the gyro chip that is actually on the boards comes from the manufacturer with low pass filtering built in. But it turns out that if we use software filtering in the microprocessor on the flight controller, we can actually sometimes do a better job, uh, but, but more importantly, the, the, the filter in the, the gyro chip is not a bad filter, but it's not very configurable. Um, so when we talk about a low pass filter, we're gonna talk about the cutoff frequency. And the cutoff frequency means that any frequencies below the cutoff frequency we, we want to keep and any frequencies above the cutoff frequency we want to get rid of um, and the, the uh, low pass filter that comes from the manufacturer of the gyro chip has cutoff frequencies of 42 98 188 and 256 hertz and also some frequencies lower than that 5 10 etc but we don't use those because those are so low that we would be cutting into the, the important frequencies that we want to keep and that we need to process. And and what if you know what if you you're using 42, but that's too much filtering and you need you know 50? Well, you can't have that. But with the soft filtering that Boris put into Betaflight V1, you can set the cutoff frequency to any value you want, and that allows you to get just the right amount of filtering for your needs. So when we when we talk about a filter one of the things we can look at is uh, this diagram and it's called a Bode plot and a Bode plot characterizes the frequency and phase response of the filter and the frequency response refers to what frequencies the filter is going to pass unchanged here we've got zero dB reduction and these low frequencies are going to pass unchanged and then as we get to higher frequencies and go past the cutoff frequency, we see that the frequencies higher and higher are more and more attenuated and get, get sort of reduced in their strength and filtered out, as it were. Uh, and a, uh, a first order filter, like is being described here, has 3 dB of reduction at the cutoff frequency. And, and 3 dB is roughly equivalent to half as strong. So it's reduced by one half. And then it reduces at a rate of 20 dB per decade, or I, I prefer to think about it as 6 dB per octave. So if 3 dB is half as strong, 6 dB is one fourth as strong, and an octave is a doubling or halving of the frequency. So if our cutoff frequency was 50 Hertz, we would be 3 dB down at 50 Hertz, and then 6 dB plus 3 dB down one octave up. So one octave up from 50 hertz would be 100 hertz. Just double it. So it'd be 6 dB for the extra octave and 3 dB at the cutoff frequency. And then at 200, it would be 6 plus 6 plus 3. And at 400, it would be 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 3, et cetera. If for the, other, the other characteristic that we see here in the Bode plot is the uh, phase response. And this is a really important thing to consider if we, the only thing we were thinking about was the cutoff frequency, then let's say we, we want to keep frequencies of 20 hertz and below, which is where the PID loop needs to do most of its work. Well, we could just set the cutoff frequency at 20 hertz, and, and we would get wonderful attenuation of the higher frequency noise. But there's a downside. And that is that the, 
the PT1 filter or the, the first order low pass filter also causes some delay in the signal as the signal goes through. And that delay is frequency dependent. At, at the cutoff frequency, we have 45 degrees of delay. And then as we go uh, down in frequency, the delay approaches zero. Now, what does 45 degrees of delay mean in, in a term that we can relate to, like milliseconds? Well, if you think about the frequency, you have a frequency like uh, 100 hertz, and 100 hertz equ uh, equates to a certain number of milliseconds, and then 45 degrees, well, 360 degrees would be one full cycle, 45 degrees would be a fraction of a cycle, and when you do all that math, you get this chart. So don't worry about the math if you don't want to. This chart shows the delay of the filter at the cutoff frequency, so 45 degrees of delay, uh, for various cutoff frequencies. And what you need to know is that this delay is at the cutoff frequency, and then as frequencies go lower, the delay approaches zero. Uh, okay, But you can see that the lower the cutoff frequency, the more delay there is in milliseconds, and that propagates downwards throughout the, the pass band. Now, uh, the stop band also has frequency, uh, has phase shift, but we don't really care about that because the whole point of this filter is to filter out those upper frequencies. So if there's uh, 90 degrees of delay at 500 hertz, who cares? We've, we've filtered out 500 hertz, so we don't care about that. We just care about the stuff in the pass band. So we can see from these charts that there's a trade-off. Lower cutoff frequencies give us better filtering of the stuff we want to get rid of, but have increased delay. And you can also see that the, the, the delay uh, increases non-linearly as you go down. Um, and you can also see that here, that, that because the, the hertz gets uh, longer, because the wavelength gets longer, uh, as the, the frequency goes down, there's more time in real time for that same 45 degrees of delay. So, uh, so we definitely, we pay more of a penalty going from say, uh, say 60 to 50, where we go up by about a half a mil, 0.4 seconds, than from say 100 to 90, where we go up by significantly less than that. So there's an incentive to keep the cutoff frequency as high as possible to keep the phase delay low, and there's an incentive to keep the cutoff frequency as low as possible to keep the filtering good, and, and we have to find a balance between that. Speaking from the perspective of tuning, when your cutoff frequency is too low, well, if your cutoff frequency was really low, like down in the 20s, then you would really be cutting out useful information that the PID loop needed to respond to, and you would find that the copter might fly really soft or might not, might not be as effective at making its maneuvers. But once you're up in the range of 40 or 50 hertz and above, you're really not filtering the, the important frequencies that the PID loop needs to see very much. And then it's just a question of how much noise is getting in versus how much delay you're getting. Uh, when, you, when you set that cutoff frequency too low, uh, you, you will sometimes find that uh, the copter will have a harder time responding to prop wash oscillation, for example or other really dynamic conditions. Uh, and you see that especially on the D term. The D term needs a lot more filtering than the P term uh, or the gyro. And so we, we'll typically see D term filters with cutoffs in, in the 20 to 10 hertz range. And I know I said that's in the, in the useful band of frequencies that we need to respond to. Well, the D term needs, need, the D term's had too much coffee and it needs, a, it needs to be reined in. It needs a straight jacket to hold it down. Uh, whereas the P term can be a little more dynamic. So we have much lower cutoffs for the D term than for the P term. Now that's all well and good, but there's another called, kind of filter called an FIR or FIR filter. And FIR filters are really interesting uh, if you're a, a, a signals engineer. FIR filters can be designed to have basically any frequency response and phase response that you desire. The only limit is how much processing power and memory you're willing to throw at the filter. So if we go back to the uh, first order filter here in the Bode plot, every first order filter is going to have this exact slope. 
The only question is, where is the cutoff frequency? You can move it up, you can move it down, right? But, but it's going to have this exact slope. And you, by combining first order filters, you can make more complicated slopes. So you can have another first order filter, a high pass that worked like this, and you could create a notch. You know, but it gets it gets very tedious to design complicated filters by combining first order filters. Uh, so an FIR filter, you can define. You use one of these calculators on the internet. You don't do it by hand these days, but you can define exactly what you want the frequency response of the filter to be. So say from 0 to 400 hertz, I want uh, unity gain, so no reduction with 5 dB of ripple. And then from 500 to 1,000 hertz, I want to completely squash those frequencies, negative 40 dB. And I hit design filter, and here's the frequency response I get. So above this 500 hertz, I'm squashing these frequencies at negative 40 dB or less. And below this 400 hertz, I've got almost perfect unity gain here where, where they we're not affecting uh, the signals barely at all. And so we could easily we could easily come up with something like for sampling frequency of 1000 Hertz, that's a loop time of 1000. And from 0 to 40 Hertz, uh, I have unity gain. And from 50 to 500 Hertz, and design filter. Boom. Uh, and I can't, oh, darn it. Well, it's a bad example because uh, because I, I've, I've created an invalid value. So I should have tried that example before I started recording. Uh, but anyway, suffice it to say, you can just, you can add all the pass bands and stop bands and you, know, you can do whatever you like and you can design a filter. And when you do that, let me reload this page real quick so it brings the default back up. When you do that, the fil fear filter designer gives you these numbers. This set of numbers are the coefficients of the filter. And long story short, you put these coefficients into a into a computer algorithm that processes the signal, and these coefficients make the filter have this uh, frequency response. So that's very cool because we can we can design basically any filter we want based on the co and just take the coefficients, stick them in an algorithm. And, and get the filter that we need. Now, the number of filters matters, or the, rather the number of taps matters. These, these coefficients are called taps, and we can set the number of taps, and we can see that as we change the number of taps, here's seven taps for that same filter. Notice that the filter is much less good at matching our requirements, whereas if we increase the number of taps, the filter gets much better and gets much more sort of smooth and, and closely matches our requirements. So, so the more taps you have, the more processing there is and the more memory it takes. So we have a limit on the number of taps that we can really effectively use uh, on something like a microprocessor, like, uh, like on a flight controller. So let's real quick take a look here at the filter that's used in Betaflight V2. And I've input the coefficients from the source code into Octave. And I'm going to just generate the frequency response here. And here is the frequency and phase uh, graphs for the filter used in Betaflight V2. And notice that we have here at around 170 hertz, we have at least 20 dB of attenuation above that, right? And we have pretty good attenuation all the way up. Now we're at 100 hertz, we're only 5 dB down. So this roughly corresponds to a first order. Remember, a first order filter is 3 dB down at the cutoff. So we're, we're about 5 dB down at about, say, 90. So this roughly corresponds to a first order cutoff of maybe 80 hertz. But of course, the actual response of the filter the rest of the way is different. Now, I think if we compare these plots, we would see that a first order filter actually would keep going down as it would go straight and then go down. And it would keep going down as you hit the cutoff frequency and probably have more filtering at above these higher frequencies. But the most important thing, um, potentially the most important thing, is note the linear phase response here. And that means that we're going to have constant delay across all the frequencies. And that, that could be a good thing. The delay of a 7-tap filter is something like 3 milliseconds. And that's 3 milliseconds across the whole frequency band. And there may be some advantage to that. Uh, I don't know. These are very good questions to ask and require someone who knows more about filtering than me, like Qopter, the guy who Qcopter, the guy who designed it. Anyway, that's it for me. Happy flying.